All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing another uh, Patreon review. This time we are doing Pseudonerd, and Pseudonerd is on the right side. He described himself as the bald guy uh, in the white gi, but I just think he's a gorgeous man, so we're going to use different descriptors, okay? Uh, this looks like it's taken from Flow Grappling. Hopefully they don't sue me. And it looks like a serious match, man. All right, I like that ever you both got in a fucking stance. This guy's stance is bullshit, by the way. He's not trying. He's never going to shoot off that. He, he knows he's just trying to touch you and pull guard. The way I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to fucking go through you, motherfucker. If you try to post out and grab me, I'm going to be like, I'm going to shoot with my right hand and my left hand's coming to your ankle and then I'm going to swim to your other side. Like, I'm going forward like a fucking train on you because you are just... <laughs> that was good. Tell me they gave you something for that. Uh... I don't know if... Did that guy really get a guard pull off that? That is so gay. Alright, I see how it is. But I'm glad you got your advantage. I do think that rule set is fucking stupid, though, where they give you an advantage for double guard pulls, but not if he just pulls guard. Uh, man, you gotta you gotta go right now. He has cross sleeve on you. Um, you should be just controlling one of his other sleeves and picking him up off the ground. Staying down in this is just so sketchy. Especially with... You have good hip flexibility, so you're pretty comfortable that low, but... Having both of these knees pinched off is not going to prevent you from getting destroyed eventually. And to point out to other people that might be watching this, something he's doing really well right in here is he's he's not just sitting like this for a show. He's actually pinching his knee into his rib on both sides. And that's limiting the range of motion the other guy can do. He can't turn and get angles on him as well. Okay. The only problem is you're off balance forward and backwards a little bit. Okay. So pros and cons. I, I would be standing up and picking this guy up, not literally letting him... Uh, reach out into my collar like that. Um, the way you stand up like that, that, that was really risky. Okay, you can see you gave up your shoulder line for a second right there because you were reaching for the collar and you were leaning forward and you were trying to pick him up without your hips being under you anymore. They were behind you. Okay, so um, that is something I would try to do a little bit cleaner. You don't need to pick him up, but you do want to get to your feet because it's the best place to open a closed guard. Okay, good job kind of retrapping his uh, his hip right there. If you guys didn't notice, the only reason he didn't get armbarred is he pinched that off in time and prevented the rotation. But I definitely, uh, oh, he's got his knee in now. Okay, yeah, no, fuck that. We're going through this motherfucker now. Good shit getting that in. Yep, finish the knee slice. Finish that knee slice. Just keep pressuring. Start kicking it off with your other leg. You're good. Stay low. Stay low. Stay down. Uh, start taking your right knee and driving it backwards into that leg that's on the ground right there. That's kind of catching you. Um, keep pulling yourself backwards off this too. This is yours. You can take that right now. You shouldn't have postured back up though. Uh, you should have kept committing to that knee slice. That was done already. Nah, I'd get off my knees right now. Absolutely get off my, uh, my knee. I don't know about coming in like this though. This looks like something I could punish and take advantage of. Almost like that guy did by taking the sleeve and then dragging it across once you strip the grip. Um, really you should reach down and get that, that grip off of your pants right now. That would be what I think would be the call. Um, it's just so dangerous to let them keep that because they can come up so fast and they can offset your weight so fast. Good attempt at going through for the leg drag on this side. Um, yeah, like I said, just keep letting them keep that, that pants grip and letting them keep that side. And now he looks like he's pulling you into 50-50 almost. We definitely don't want to be there. Can't tell if his foot's under you and on your hip or if it's just floor, it's in front of you still. No, so there's no 50-50. You're still good. Um, but at the same time, you're not good because you're still... There we go. Now you have that away. Okay, right here. Take your left hand. Start to take that foot. Put it into the ground. Okay, so now your, your cross arm is what's controlling that leg. And then you can start to replace your feet. Okay, this knee can come in where this knee is right now. And then you can start looking for leg drags and back chases. Okay, that's what I would be doing in this situation. Good. It's a lot of movement. Um, you didn't move him very much there, but the movements look clean. See, my, my only problem with cri big critique right now is you're trying to force passes that just are not there at the those times. You know, the angles are not there, and you're trying to go through it anyways. And because you're being so complacent in letting him grab your legs and stuff, it's already prematurely shutting down most of your offense. Um, that's a good grip right there. Okay, very down, very, very down. Before he could bring his leg in, if you could have two on one that as an underhook, you would have got something off of that. Um, I would start to work on getting that pressure back, maybe pushing his legs off to the side, giving that some real sprawl pressure. Now, now it's unhooked, now you can play again. Now we can start thinking about coming forward. That guy has very, very good hip flexibility, but he's relying on it so much that you could absolutely kill him as soon as we get close to a real pass and buckle down. Gotta get him off that knee. 
See, he's just reaching for it over and over again, and that's what's preventing you from coming in anywhere. Okay, hips back, hips back, hips back. This is getting sketchy. Hips back, hands fighting his hands. You gotta get those off you. Okay, you right now, uh, you are in deep shit. I don't know about going for the Kimura. Most people that go for the Kimura end up just giving up their back or giving up a triangle. Um, maybe you didn't go for a Kimura. Did you actually just grab his leg? I couldn't see from this angle. Okay, it looks like your butterfly hook pulled the leg into you. you it looks like you had the Kimura grip, but you were uh, using that to set up the leg. So that was a good job getting back to a guard, but we gave up points. Okay, so as soon as you turned away from the guy... So, it's super insanely bad right here. This is awful, but I'm not... Like, I wouldn't give up on this position yet. Okay, so something you could be thinking about doing right now is taking this hand up and over his shoulder and hooking on the inside of his hip as you brought your hips out to the side and then do a traditional wrestling sit-out in order to, even if you don't put him down off of it, you know, a lot of times you can break whatever grip they have, stand up and reset the position and not give up the two points. But I would definitely not turn away from him right here because if this guy had been on top of his game, um, like his right foot didn't do anything, it didn't go into a hook, he could have chased your back in that moment and that would have been awful for you. Okay, um, that was just too loose of a single X, okay. Um, you did a good job getting into it, and everything from here is o kind of okay. You know, this is getting a little sketchy. It doesn't have enough pressure. You're bringing your arm in. This hand isn't doing much except for holding this. So what I would be doing is uh, this foot I'd be taking across and kind of controlling this to prevent the back step, really wedging my foot into there, or even just going shallow hook back and forth, and then start looking for sleeve grips and start looking for collar grips. Like, okay, you're using that hand to try to rotate his knee out, which is fine. Um, the whole position is just a little bit too loose, and as soon as he starts touching your foot, you abandon the position because you think he's going to actually get the esteem lock. I'm not sure that he would have been able to get it, okay? And I think you could have brought him down and swept him anyways. But, uh... You trying to get back to your feet was okay because he wasn't ready to capitalize on it. But you can see you almost did kind of get onto a body lock, which you used to get butterfly guard. So it worked out. Um, just a little risky. Okay. Very, very first thing you do in this situation is you... You lift with your feet, sit him up, make space between you and him, get back to sitting yourself, and then we can shoot back under him and go for a big sweep of momentum. Um, letting him posture up and relying on our upper body right now is, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't, be I wouldn't be chill here. There would be no chill at all. I'd be honey badger mode in order to get this sweep. Ooh, that was good. That was a really good example of sticky butterfly hook and uh, basically punishing the other guy. When he lifted his weight up right there and you followed him with that hook, he's not backstepping out of that. He's not windshield wiping out of that. It's a free leg and you were able to surf it down to your other grip extremely well. So now you should think single X and X guard again though. You should take your other foot, your right foot, or and kind of like stretch his legs out, okay? Um, maybe put your knee on the outside, put that foot back into a shallow hook, and because you're on the collar right there, you can easily start to pull him down and offset his weight that way, okay, which is going to force him to post his hand on the mat, okay, and then you can grab that other sleeve, and the fact that he's grabbing your collar right there means you can take this grip through and grab, um, this, okay, you, um, when I said single X, really, I meant X card, you should be pulling this all the way up, but then you should pinch it off and you should get control of that sleeve right there. Getting both sleeves from single X or X card is just fantastic. So, let go of the collar. Grab his sleeve. Let go of the collar. Grab his sleeve. Right now, you can start threatening dummy sweeps, too. Very, very easily. He's giving you a lot of posture. You're just thinking forward and not backwards. Okay. That shouldn't happen. Um, you basically gave up, like, 16 perfect sweeps um, without realizing it. Though he just would have fell over. Because you're just not prioritizing the right stuff. You shouldn't be reaching down for his leg right here. You should be grabbing the sleeve. This shouldn't be reliant on your grip to hold. That you should have brought all the way up to underneath your shoulder, underneath your neck here, and you should be keeping that leg and X guard with literally just your pinch pressure here, so that way this other hand can chase sleeves or get a sleeve fed to it or do something else. Occasionally you can grab it, rotate their knee line out to make your dummy sweeps easier, but that's just not playing the position correctly, and that's why he gets his foot out, okay? And you still have that pants grip, so you still are in the game. You can pull yourself back under, you could turn into him and wrestle up really well. Um, I like that you didn't let him strip that grip. Now at this point, I'm not sure that grip's helping you. Uh, when he was coming in that way. Uh, I think he was if he was playing a little bit better, you would have collapsed your own frame right there and he could have started coming in over the top a little bit. I like the cross sleeve. 
I would probably circle my foot back in and get my left foot back into play from here. Oh, he's got it hooked. Oh, that worked out perfect. Nice. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Now we still need to kind of get on top of him again, though. So right away, start hooking under the legs. Start looking for a sweep. Roll under him and roll him over. Um, you can start attacking the arm. Good job hooking that leg. There we go. Pretty sure you're going to tap him. Yeah, hey, that was good shit, man. That was a fun one to go over. Um, lots of lots of good stuff. And then, you know, lots of easy things you can just clean up. So we're going to go until he raises your hand because definitely deserve it. Wait, did I miss it? I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, so let's go back over uh, quick things you can fix. Um, you know, you're looking for the double guard pull. This is just a strategy. You don't always have to shoot. I'm just saying what I would do here. I know he wants to pull guard. I'm going to at least go for the two. I'm going to be... Um, if he jumps at me, I'm going to back up. Level change even lower than him, and I'm shooting forward. Because if I can even touch your legs or touch your pants, you're fucked. He's not in a position to sprawl right now. He's in a position to pretend he wants to shoot because he wants to jump at you and just get that contact for a really super fucking silly guard pull based on just abusing the rules. Um... In close guard, I really think you should have been prioritizing getting to your feet, but getting to your feet in a safer way. You're reliant on your grips on the guy, that's why you're leaning forward. If I get my hips up, I push myself off and get my hands away. I really don't want to be leaning over top of someone because you can't control their hips anymore and you can't control your own shoulder line very well anymore, so it gives them a lot of rotation. Um, I think it ended up worked out. Yeah, you did. You got that knee back in. This knee slice would have been the end of the match if you'd have been able to just double down on it. I know he's got his hand in there, but you don't need to have a perfect underhook to finish an e-slice. You could have took this, jammed your elbow into his body, reached back, and actually grabbed his belt, okay? Um, there's just a lot we could have been done doing, and it looks like you could have very easily cleared this other side. Even if he's holding onto your pants on the other side, that doesn't matter. It can just be a little annoying, but I'm still gonna start kicking his legs off at this point. This knee shield is doing nothing. His legs aren't even closed. There is nothing really stopping you from going all the way through, except for not really understanding the knee slice mechanics appropriately. Doubling down on this right here from this position would have been great. Um, and where your arm is is actually pretty good, I would say, for a really, really good squeeze under his back. But then you just should not have postured back up. There was no need. When we're down that low, like right there, you should. You're, what needs to happen is you need way more pressure on your knee. Like all of your weight really should have switched to just being completely on this knee while you were down. And it's almost like you're sprawling backwards to move his leg out of the way. Again, um, it looked like you were a little too focused on coming in for slow pressure passes when they're not there. Um, you can't just think, I'm going to pressure pass this super flexible guy. You need to use outside angles and outside passes to set up those smash pass finishes. Okay, It's just very difficult to come in on your knees and think, I'm just going to Bernardo Faria this guy. Um, it's Because he gets to get every par perfect defensive angle he wants with his flexibility and the fact that it's coming in so slow. So it could do a lot better in the passing. You should be thinking way more leg drag and back chase stuff when the, with the way the guy was giving up his hips. Like here, um, clearing that grip off the pants definitely would have been essential. And I would really be thinking about, like, as soon as you're not able to come in anymore, like these kind of positions, I'm thinking, like, clear that, um, you know, fix my leg positioning so it's a, a leg drag position and then chase his back or drag him across or step through his legs or whatever that ends up leading into. It's just a better position to go to. Ooh, a lot of man, a lot of his hip rotations got a little scary for you. Um, this, I think you gave this up a little too easy. There is serious threat he's going to get on your back, but I think you could have fought this a little harder there a in a way that didn't involve turning away from him because that guy fucked up his back chase, but even though you got his leg pulled in, that wouldn't have stopped someone from chasing your back if they were really, really good. He would have kept chasing there. Um, instead, he came on top for the two, and then I wouldn't have abandoned that position that you had. That would have been fantastic if you for you to keep that position and get a sweep off it. Um, and then when you actually pulled yourself in a single X and or X guard, sorry, you're just you're not playing X guard correctly in my opinion. You're, you're giving up way too much pressure on this other side. You have that hand fed right there right now, which is great, but you're you're just forgetting to pinch your head and your shoulder together, and that's going to be primarily what stops from from kicking over your head or from you know kind of just dragging their leg out or turning their knee away and trying to run away. 
and then you're you stayed on his collar for so long when you didn't need to so like there it looked like when the, the one time you chased his sleeve he uh he moved it that's when you go to the collar that's when you pull down at an angle so you force him to put his hand on the mat near you and then you use your legs to keep turning him that way so he can't take his hand off the mat and that's when you can let go and quickly grab it and then you can turn his weight off of it pull it out turn back into him and then uh knock him over so a little more x guard technique would have definitely guaranteed the sweep right there uh your way of switching to the triangle right there was fucking awesome and the way you finished it was really really good so obviously i don't have any real critique there you basically did exactly what you needed to do to win at that point in time and we're gonna watch you get your hand raised one more time if i can actually catch the timing so overall man good stuff Oh, and don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express, everyone. Bye, have a great time. Guys, if you want to learn more about the techniques that we actually use, we have a lot of instructionals on BJJFanatics.com. If you guys just have too much money and want to throw some away to some sketchy causes, feel free to check out our Patreon. And if you guys want to just see some random shit that I'm not posting on YouTube, small videos, pictures, whatever, you can check out our Instagram.